Welcome to the Private Practice Startup Podcast, where we help mental health professionals grow their dream practices and live a life they love. We chat with successful private practitioners, business coaches, and marketing experts, bringing you tons of practice building tips. We invite you to take advantage of our private practice paperwork and our signature marketing e-course. And we have a gift for you. This is the exact methodology we use to create our six-figure private pay practices and have helped many other therapists do the same. Go to privatepracticestartup.com and on the home page, click the button to download a free copy of your dream private practice playbook. Now on to today's episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome back for another episode of the Private Practice Startup Podcast. We are actually knee-deep in our exciting coaching mini-series, and today we're really excited to bring our guest here with you, and co-hosting with me is one of our amazing private practice coaches, Susan Block. Hi, Susan. Hey, Kate. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Yes, it's great to have you here. And we have one of your past coaches, Gianni Adamo. She's here with us today. Hi, Gianni. Hi, Kate. Hi, Susan. Hi. Good to see you. Nice to see you also. And it's great to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me because I'm actually one of your listeners. I am your listening audience. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. We have our, our loyal, loyal listener and past coachee on the show. We're so excited to hear your success story today. So this episode is our Gianni success story. Where are they now? And we'll get to hear about Gianni's journey in private practice and the struggles she's faced along the way and how she's overcome them and hear a bit about her experience working with Susan and um, any recommendations that Gianni has for those of you who are in the practice building and growing journey. So let's take a moment to introduce Gianni. In 2001, one year after her divorce, Gianni founded Fearless Love to help individuals and couples create safe, intimate marriages and fearless, loving relationships. In 2018, Gianni authored an Amazon bestseller, From Love Trauma to Fearless Love, Seven Tango Steps for Breaking Free from Narcissists and Predators. The book is recognized with the prestigious Kirkus Reviews Recommended Book Award, and it also received a 2020 New Author of the Year Award by Audiobook Reviewer. Gianni's articles and contributions on relationships and heartbreak appear in yourtango.com, Bride, Emerson, Glamour, Psych Central, Bustle, On Mogul, Pop Sugar, and E Harmony. And her free time, Gianni en- enjoys traveling and dancing salsa and Argentine tango. Hi, Gianni. Welcome. Hi, Kate. How are you? <laughs> Thank we're, you. We're doing great. We're excited to dive into today's episode and hear a bit about your journey. And before we do that, let's hear from our sponsor. Your time is your money, so why waste it checking to see if your next appointment has arrived? Instead, gain the freedom to focus on your most important tasks with The Receptionist for iPad. This episode is sponsored by The Receptionist for iPad, the highest rated digital check-in software for therapy offices and behavioral health clinics. Thousands of private practices use The Receptionist for iPad to discreetly check in clients, and after each client has checked in, The system sends practitioners an instant notification. No more poking your head down the hallway to see if your next appointment has arrived. Go to receptionist.com slash PPS, as in private practice startup, to start your 14-day free trial of The Receptionist for iPad today. Make sure to sign up on our unique page and you'll get your first month of the software free when you become a customer. Enjoy! Okay, so it's time to dive in. Johnny, tell us a little bit about how you became a therapist and then how you entered the private practice world. Well, Kate and Susan, I had been in a long term marriage, and for about 10 years of our 15 year marriage, I, my husband and I at the time, saw and invested in couples therapy. So, 10 years where we were in and out of couples therapy, we also sought out other personal development uh, specialties. But even though we invested 10 years of our lives in couples counseling, our marriage did end up in divorce. That left me with actually a lot of pretty much bitterness and anger towards the industry because I was wondering, why would two people who love each other, who consider each other best friends, because we did, not be able to find a solution to repair their relationship? Through that journey, I went back to school. I got my degree and became a therapist. There I learned that I was a codependent partner. 
Okay, so we got one part of the equation. And it wasn't until I filed for divorce and exited that marriage that I truly was able to understand some of the underpinnings onto why my marriage failed. No one had the courage to tell us straight faced what the underpinnings were. Not one person in 10 years. And we went to all sorts of specialists. Technically, I was the codependent partner. He had developmental issues that left him with obsessive compulsive personality disorder. No one ever diagnosed him in front of me. No one ever told him that. Um, he had, he's on the spectrum. No one ever told him that. Of course, he's an older man. These are now things that get diagnosed now for the younger generations. In my generation, we were not getting all that information. And on top of that, he had high narcissistic traits. So I was dealing with someone who I can communicate and connect from the neck up <laughs> and we can do any activity together because we got along super fantastic. But when it came to deep intimacy, when it came to being emotionally attuned to one another, I was dealing with a wall and that left me in great pain and suffering, which manifested itself with depression and anxiety and emotional deregulation. So eventually I had to leave and exit a relationship that we both professed to love one another and we both treated each other as best friends. Obviously, that journey not only inspired me to become a therapist, but also to find and unearth my calling on this planet because I truly understand the pain when you are trying to make something work when it's just not working. So that's really what led me here today. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that personal aspect of your story and your journey of what you've been through. And it's so interesting how our struggles and our pain can really inform our purpose once we're able to work through that and grow from that. And here you are, you specialize in working with couples and you're a writer and author and um, that has become your niche. Did you know right off the bat that that was going to be your niche of working with couples or was that something that you kind of evolved into over time? Because I had already had years of failed therapy and a ton of depression and anxiety and stress around my marriage. And yet we were living like this beautiful life because we, we both were dual income couple. We had no children. We live very comfortable in the suburbs of New Jersey. We traveled the world. We were living this great life. So what was the problem? We had money. We had youth <laughs> on our side, you know, and we, we still loved each other. So I'm like, what was going on? So I went back to school specifically to get my counseling degree so I can focus in couples and marriage. So that I've always known once I figured out what my calling was, this was my, my uh, track. And this mm -hmm. has always been, I've always specialized in this area. Okay. Go ahead, Susan. Yeah. And I was going to say, like, I just have always, I, I've gotten to know Gianni just in our coaching sessions. And one thing that I picked up on right away is just your openness and, and your vulnerability. And I, I just think your clients are so lucky to get to work with you. And I can't wait to hear more about your journey in, in private practice and all the growth that you've done because you really took a really dark, time in your life. And that was the fuel that you needed to create what you are today. And I know so many of us, you know, myself included and the listeners out there, that is how we get started in private practice. So thank you for sharing that. It's my pleasure. I, it's my joy to be a couples therapist. I tell my couples out when I welcome them into my practice, I'm like, it, it will be my joy to work with the two of you. It is just so important for me to be able to share hope and provide skills and, and the tools that will help with the transformation or at least an informed decision on what they should be doing. Absolutely. If, if, if it's not working. It's so important to find someone who's not only specialized, but someone who loves to work with that particular population. And then on the flip side, it's what helps us to keep our passion alive. And it, it you know, our, our caseload's full and, you know, it just works in, in, in such a, a, a great way there. Tell us a little bit about how you knew about getting into private practice. Was that something that you had planned from the get go? Was that something you kind of found along the way? So I came from corporate America. I'm from Northern New Jersey. I have an A-type personality. There was no way I was going to go work for an agency. <laughs> it was <laughs> private practice, private pay all the way or go home. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm like, no thanks. I, and I'm very entrepreneurial. So 
I'm, a, I'm an independent thinker and I don't need a lot of supervision. I'm very, you know, I'm good on my own two feet. Self-motivated. Yeah, very self-motivated. I love it. So knowing that you have some of that business background and entrepreneurial spirit and you had that vision for yourself, what was the experience like of getting into private practice and, you know, doing all the marketing and um, building your caseload? Tell us a little bit about that. That was the overwhelming and and still can be the overwhelming part of my business being in private practice. Because again, I never, I, I've never had compassion fatigue, and I don't think I ever will because I'm so passionate around what I do. But what I do get is overwhelmed with the business aspect, the marketing aspects, and the financial pieces that, you know, how to make things work, um, which hopefully this will segue into why I actually even called you guys because I've been in practice now for 16 years, and mm-hmm. last year, a number 15 I decided I was going to scale my practice. I had gone to India in the fall and that was a life changing experience. And I realized, Oh my God, I can't just be doing what I do for my small audience. I've got to expand. I've got to get out there and be more global than, and have a more global reach than what I currently have because what I do is very much needed. I got to see, you know, even in a larger scale, the type of abuse that happened to women and in relationships um, going out to Asia and just seeing all of that was just like, wow, major eye opening, something that we don't really experience so much here in the States. So anyways, with all of that, I called you guys because obviously you guys to me are the most, the best out there to support us therapists, um, the, the uh, you know, with our private practice and getting started and, and expanding and, and scaling. So with that, I got in touch with Susan and brought Susan on board with me as, you know, as my coach to help me scale my practice. And that was also a very affirming experience um, with Susan. As I mentioned, being the entrepreneur, one of the things that I've had to learn as an entrepreneur is that I've had to stay focused because as an entrepreneurial brain that I have. I have too many creative ideas. I love inspiration. And I'm constantly thinking of new things that I can do and want to launch and want to experience and blah, blah, blah. So that can keep you in the place of never doing anything because you've got too many ideas and not following up on any of them. So I've been very good at staying focused that I was, a, therefore I was able to like write my book. I've been able to be successful in private practice. I've been able to keep my head down and do the work. However, being self-sufficient, which is what I've been, is not enough to take me to the next level. I've had to bring on Susan, and she ultimately became my role model. And that was probably my, my most important piece that I took away from Susan. There's two big important things I took away from my coaching with Susan. One is she became my role model. It wasn't that she gave me an advice that transformed how I did my business. It was that she modeled it for me. That was transformational for me. That gave me the faith, the belief, the know-how. She gave me other things, obviously. But that gave me what I needed to know that what I wanted, this dream that I had, was possible. So for that, I'm very grateful to Susan and how she role modeled for me that what I want and what I need in my life for my business is absolutely doable. You just gave me goosebumps, Gianni. I, you know, it's so wonderful to do, you know, this podcast today and, and the series because it gives us coaches, coaches a chance to follow up and to hear all the great things that you're accomplishing. And, um, I, I'm just so incredibly in awe of, of you and what you took away from our experience. It's a big step to go from solopreneur and, you know, you're your own boss, you're only worried about yourself to expanding and bringing on a team and finding the right team members and being able to market and fill their caseloads too and um, manage all of the moving parts. So it can be very overwhelming at times. And it is so helpful anytime we're leveling up and we're expanding, we're scaling and we're growing and we're chasing our dreams to be able to hire a coach 
get a mentor, work with people who are where you want to be. And I love how you talked about that aspect of Susan was someone that, you know, represented where you wanted to be. And she was living that and helping you to see the steps for how you could get there. And the three of us are all group practice owners. And it's a whole different ballgame being a group practice owner than being um, a solopreneur. So what what stands out to you as some of the main goals that you had in your work that you were focused on when you were coaching with Susan? Well, actually, the next piece that came to light and that was really strong and in my face was that I was not asking for what I was worth. Susan had asked me to do a research on what private pay practitioners were charging in my area. And when I did that research, it really woke me up because I had not increased my price since 2013. That would have been 10 years prior. Wow. So I was still operating from a, you know, 10 year old financial plan, which no longer served me. As we know, we've had a pandemic. We've had a recession. Like we've had so much. And then in South Florida, we've more than doubled our population. And so all of our cost of living has, it sounds, it seems like it's quadrupled down here. And yet I was still charging back 2013 pricing. So with that, Obviously, I did my research and I had a grief because I was undervaluing myself. I was undervaluing my my fees. So I went ahead and upped my pricing by $100 per session on top of what I was mm-hmm. charging, gave my clients, wow. gave my clients 30 days notice. Yes, I was afraid that I would lose half my clientele. But the truth was I lost a few of my clients, which is, you know, reality. And then when I started to present this new pricing to the new clients that were coming in through the door, I was anticipating a lot of pushback and I was ready for all this pushback. The truth of the matter was no one actually even flinched on my price. And I realized that the only person who had a problem with the higher pay pay schedule was me. <laughs> it was not my client, <laughs> not me. And I had to accept that I was worthy and that I could command this higher price range. Now I don't have a problem. In fact, I st- that's my starting point now. It's there and it's a lot more depending on what you want. <laughs> I'm curious, Gianni, what did you feel was like the, the roadblock for you that you were able to work through uh, by working together in the coaching sessions? The roadblocks, um, I would say the roadblock, A, for that one was not believing my worth and that people would pay it. Um, then with you becoming my role model again was unblocking the fact that what I wanted was real and I can go after this big dream of becoming more global and growing my practice, having other therapists in my practice um, and having other services that I have yet you know, to offer, which I'm actually working on that right now that I'll be offering for the fall. So there's a lot going on. I'm rebranding. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I've spent all this time rebranding. I have like, I hired a brand identity designer. I've hired a brand marketing uh, expert and I signed a whole year's contract with her. She's costing me thousands of dollars, not a year. The, for, per month. <laughs> she, she, she's she's going to really help me to get to the other side with all of that. I've hired also a uh, health, a health, uh, a brain health coach to support my wellness and making sure that I stay healthy and balanced through this transition. Because if there's one thing I have learned now in the last two months has been that I have been, as I'm expanding, pretty much I feel like under like a spiritual attack, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong, including like being hit by a drunk driver type of stuff. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Sometimes life can throw major, major curveballs our way. And um, I just want to pause the conversation for one moment and we'll dive back in right after we hear from our sponsor. Hey there, Startup Nation. Want to take your private practice to the next level? Check out Mental Health Marketing, a professional digital creative marketing agency designed just for mental health clinicians. From custom logos to professional websites and even a unique referral network building program, they've got you covered. They offer clinician-centric marketing strategies tailored to your practice's annual revenue, so it's always affordable. 
Book your initial consultation through mentalhealthmarketing.com and get a free one hour call when you mention the private practice startup. That's mentalhealthmarketing.com. You won't want to miss this. As a therapist, I can tell you from experience that having the right EHR is an absolute lifeline. I recommend using Therapy Notes. They make billing, scheduling, note taking, telehealth, and e prescribing incredibly easy. Best of all, they offer live telephone support that's available seven days a week. Look, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Therapy Notes is the number one highest rated EHR available today with 4.9 out of five stars on Trustpilot and Google. Go to therapynotes.com and enter code PPS as in private practice startup and receive a special two month trial. Absolutely free. And hey, if you're coming from another EHR, no worries. Therapy Notes will import your demographic data quick and easy at no cost to you so you can get started right away. Trust me, don't waste any more of your time. Go to therapynotes.com and enter code PPS for your two month free trial. Okay. So Gianni, you have this major shift happening in your practice and here you are expanding, you're hiring all sorts of different support to help you really fulfill this, this mission of yours and, and life is happening simultaneously. You had a major accident. There's lots of things that are going on. So what's helping you to stay focused and um, keep moving forward as you're expanding into the group practice world? What's helping me stay focused um, is, A, I'm very spiritual, so my spirituality keeps me very grounded and keeps me humble um, and in trusting and in faith that everything is working together for good and that all errors, attacks, mistakes are happening in my favor. That grounds me. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, of course, the support team that I've got around me. The people that I am, you know, who are my tribe, my community, plus the professionals that I have hired that believe in me and I believe in them. And now, you know, like that's all supporting me to keep moving forward. And in spite of the fact that I have so many irons in the fire and so many like wars and battles that I'm battling all at the same time. I'd love to just share just I, I have a, a memory of working together very quickly. And, you know, you, you talked about your divorce and, and what it's like as a, a female entrepreneur and, you know, that it's OK to, you know, uh, have all the pieces in place and, and, and you know, you're, you're heading in a good direction. But even the helpers need help. And you reached out, you asked for support. And not only did you ask for it, but you were so open to, you You were a sponge. You just wanted to, you, you wanted that guidance. You wanted that support. You were very trusting of our, you know, the, the work that we were doing. And again, it, it goes back to that vulnerability that you were just ready and open. And then you did the work in between all of our meetings. And so it was just something for us to continue to build and grow upon. And that really is about you. I'm very intuitive. And so I, I connect with you guys. I hired Ernesto on the spot the minute I heard him like say hello at your show. <laughs> That's how that works. I so like when I connect and when I feel that that the energy like I don't have I don't go into self doubt and not only do I not go into self doubt then what happens is when all hell breaks loose because no one is perfect no system is perfect I'm still committed to you. As, and they're also committed to me because I immediately am able to create this bond and trust that this is the right partnership for me. Um, and that's what some of the stuff that I've experienced through this journey that I've had in the last nine months, because I started this journey of expansion in the last nine months, that things have gone wrong. They're not perfect. People are not perfect. Systems are not. But I know in my gut that you guys, because what you're doing, what you're putting out to the world, that you guys are the right fit for me. And therefore... I've been able to 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 be vulnerable, make myself open to hearing and listening and following through on how you're coaching me. And, and that's actually one of the points I wanted to make that everybody, we all need role models and someone that can lead us into the next stage of our lives or the next stage of our business. And I know that that started with me, with you, with Susan. That's where that started. I'm curious. 
because I'm sure there are many listeners that would like to hire a coach. They thought about it. They've probably clicked on the link several times. And then for one reason or another, they don't do it. So what was it for you that made you pull the trigger when you did? I already, like I said, trusted um, Kate and Katie. And I trusted that if you, because I hadn't, I didn't know you, I knew them. <laughs> um, if you had been vetted and you're, you were asked to be part of this organization, then I knew you were trustworthy. And I also, when I spoke with you and I, I had my questions, you answered the questions as I needed, which is you already were in private practice, do an online, you had an online group practice. And I could not believe how quickly you were growing your practice. I was like, what? Unbelievable, because I know I tried back in 2018 to grow my practice alone, see, by myself, without your support, and I wasn't able to provide enough leads to the one therapist that I did hire. So this time around, I said, I'm not doing it self-sufficiency way. I want to be part of a team. I want to be part of a group, and I want to be coached. And so that's how that, that started. And so far, I've hired a operations coordinator. Um, and I'm still interviewing for uh, an experienced couples therapist because I don't want to be the only one um, who's an experienced couples therapist mm -hmm. in the team. So I'm, I am still working that out. But I'm extremely excited because I'm going to be launching couples retreats here in downtown Delray Beach. And they're going to be high end, um, very exclusive um, retreats for one couple or one family at a time. And these retreats will be very highly curated to that couple, to that family. So then not only are they having a vacation therapy, but they really are going to get their transformation while they're here. Oh. Such amazing things you're doing. I love it. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. It's so great to have you here. And Susan, I know it's always so awesome to see our past coaches and how they're doing mm -hmm. now. And um, it's great to see that you're just continuing to follow this passion and moving forward with really making a bigger impact uh, with all of the couples that you work with. And I just love that. So Gianni, if you had to come up with um, like a, a takeaway message for our audience, what would you want them to take away from your podcast with us today? The takeaway would be that as therapists, because most of the audience, uh, the listening audience are therapists, is that your complete healing is, po is possible. And that's one of the things that I've been helping other therapists with, that I can help them to complete their healing. And I can also support them if they're in a coupleship, if they're in partnership, I can support them in helping them either make a, a, an informed decision on what to do or to actually repair their relationship and create a new legacy where their family can flourish. Uh, I, it's important that we believe in ourselves, that other people, we bring other people around us that believe in us and can help us to get to the other side. And these people need to be already on the other side to support us to get to where we're going. Um, there's one more quick thing that I wanted to say is that my book, From Love Trauma to Fearless Love, um, you had asked me a question, uh, on, you know, prior to getting on the show, you know, what book would I recommend for people to read? And my, my answer to that is the best book that any therapist can read is the one that she is or he is waiting to write with it within themselves. When I was able to write from love trauma to fearless love, seven tango steps for breaking free from narcissists and predators. It was a journey of healing for me. I ended up breaking through gener transgenerational curses and, and traumas and toxic relationship things that finally cleared. And it didn't clear until I finally got my story down in a fantasy and in a, in a uh, fiction. So for the therapist, and I know there's so many of us out there who do have a heart and desire to write a book, to have bigger dreams, to go global, I'm here for you, girl. I am here for you guys, whoever you are. I'm here. Like you've done it. It's possible. Exactly. It is possible. Yeah. Like contact me. I'm like my, if you want to reach me, I'm Gianni Adamo and I'm at fearlesslove.net. Um, and there's a free 15 minute consultation that they can click on. And also they could just provide me information through a contact form on my website if they have any interest in, in going further on their, in their journey. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And Susan, what stands out to you today, having Gianni on the show and being able to catch up with her? 
Confidence. I just see a woman that, cause we get to see you, you know, visually, uh, when we're doing the, the podcast and you are, you, you're just like oozing with confidence. And I'm so proud of you for all the, the good work you're doing out there. And, you know, there's so many people out there in the world who need your services and they need you to get, you know, to have the business pieces in place so that you can, you know, work with the people that you're passionate about working with. And so I'm just so happy to see you. What is it like a year later or just under a year later? Under and, a year later. Um, yeah. And um, just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Susan. And I, it's an honor to really to have been mentored by you and coached by you. It's It was just the beginning of my journey. And I'm still in that journey. And I'm so excited. I can't wait to see how many more new doors open for me based, based on what we started. So thank you. Absolutely. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Gianni. It's great to reconnect with you. You mentioned er- Ernesto Segismundo earlier in the show that you hired him for from filmit.com to do your promo video. And Gianni and, and I and a group of people had a had the chance to have um, dinner together at a restaurant many, many years ago. So it's so good to see you again. And um, we wish you the best of luck. Please keep in touch. Startup Nation, we hope you enjoyed this special episode with Gianni's success story here today. And uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. We have Dr. Danielle Gradic and our coach, Kimberly, Dr. Kimberly Grosher will be on with Danielle's success story. And we will air that for you tomorrow. So stay in tune for that. And we hope that you're enjoying this unique, special mini series that we're having. And, you know, we're trying to always create content that's meeting your needs along the startup to mastery process and private practice. So if there's ever a topic that we haven't had in our 332 episodes, please let us know. We always love to hear from you and we encourage you, encourage you to subscribe, rate and review the show. And we will look forward to seeing you on the next episode. So in the meantime, everybody stay inspired. Thanks for joining us on The Private Practice Startup. Visit theprivatepracticestartup.com for awesome resources, free trainings, attorney-approved private practice paperwork, and so much more. 